Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. We're out at a webinar hosted by Enphase Energy, and I have the pleasure of sitting with Raghu, who is the chief product officer over at Enphase, as well as the co-founder of the technology. I'm really excited to be sitting down with Raghu to be able to talk about the transition from net metering 2.0 to the new solar billing program that's being implemented, also referred to as net energy metering. Uh, things that we're gonna kind of talk about is regarding the future of the battery technology and how it plays an important and vital role future for renewable energy. So without further ado, let's pass it on to Raghu so that way he can talk about his passions at Enphase Energy. Hey, good morning, Dale. Thank you for having me. It's exciting to be talking to Pacific Sun again, and uh, I'm glad to share with you kind of the things that are going on uh, in the world of um, NEM3, and in, we can also talk in general about what's going on in, uh, at Enphase. Um, so clearly, you know, we're going through a pretty significant transition here uh, between what was NEM 2.0 and what's loosely referred to as NEM 3.0. Um, I think the gist of it is that any more uh, solar only systems um, which were very popular under NEM 2.0 will now be coupled with storage, coupled with batteries, because it makes economic sense to have solar and batteries coupled together um, because it delivers great economics for the homeowner similar to a solar only system. Uh, I think this is a very key transition for our, for our market, for our industry at large. And I think it's a very positive transition. Yes, whenever there are transitions, there can be disruptions and people get a little bit uncomfortable. You see some people embracing that change and others being a little bit more cautious, but that's normal. Uh, but I really strongly believe, and we believe that at Enphase, that this is, going, this is a very positive movement, uh, especially over the, over the long run. Now, you spoke in regards to the infrastructure and how it's important. The current infrastructure throughout the United States is pretty dated. California having a pretty inferior infrastructure to some of the other states that have been rolling out um, developments in that and in expanding upon renewable energy and bringing that online. Uh, this transition should help the infrastructure. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, 100%. So let's take a step back, right? Um, the reality is this infrastructure, the, the energy infrastructure, the entire generation, the delivery mechanism, transmission lines, substations, distribution infrastructure, all of these have not evolved much from a pure technology point of view in the last 125 years. And now there are so many new technologies, solar and batteries uh, being a couple of them, that, are, that can be very transformative for this industry, uh, for, this, for the energy infrastructure, right? Um, if you really think about it, look at the changes that are taking place in our lives. We are electrifying our homes. Um, electrification includes things like uh, EV charge, EVs, right? I mean, we have the EV adoption of EVs is going up significantly. People are moving from uh, old air conditioners to from gas heating to heat pumps, et cetera. What that means is that the demand per home is going to more than double. And that demand needs to be serviced. And servicing the demand using the existing infrastructure, I think is going to pose a very significant challenge. The real solution is to service that demand with solar and batteries. What that means is I produce my own energy, I store my own energy, and I use my own energy as, as needed. Of course, the utility infrastructure will continue to exist and I'll transact energy between um, the utility infrastructure and the home, because there are moments when I have excess energy and I can sell it back to the grid, and there are moments when I don't want to buy from the grid because it's too expensive, I'd rather use my own energy. And I think NEM3 pushes our industry in that, in, in that direction. Um, the consequence of that is that the home becomes this unit of great intelligence and it's making a lot of autonomous decisions, it's optimizing locally, managing all the energy resources within the home, whether that's solar, your batteries, your EV chargers, EV, EV chargers becoming fully bi-directional in the future, managing, selling and buying energy appropriately from the grid. All of that uh, complexity means there is tremendous amount of intelligence, and that's what Enphase does, is builds this intelligent energy management system um, uh, for the home. 
and it's contributing to the infrastructure as a whole rather than having to have a dam developed to generate for an entire town. The town itself and all the individual residential homes can generate that power and share it amongst each other. I mean, that's the ideal vision here. You're absolutely right about it. So um, the, the, the notion of this really intelligent energy system that's within your home is, is obviously going to do what's best for the homeowner but it's also participating and supporting the grid. So for example, during times of great demand, let's say you know, last year, if you recall in August, we had, we had a massive heat wave. And if these systems with solar and batteries and, uh, and EV chargers and EV chargers someday, and EVs becoming bi-directional someday can actually help support the grid, provide energy to the grid when it needs it most. Of course, there has to be a compensatory mechanism for it. And in fact, if you really look at it, NEM3 does that for you. So I think these intelligent systems are not only about optimizing locally, but also being aware globally of the, how, the, how the entire network is performing and supporting the network. Enphase being a microinverter manufacturer for so many years that has really been a key advantage to the industry is now able to transition over to a software development platform. Not only a hardware, but the software is vital to this transition, especially when you incorporate batteries, because batteries rely so heavily on software. It's not, a solar panel is pretty dumb in most mm -hmm. cases. It just generates power, you connect it to the microinverter, and it converts it to an energy that you can use in your home. The battery has so much more going on. So with that, we're now transitioning to the third generation, I mean, you could argue it's the fourth or fifth generation if you talk about the AC batteries that you launched in Australia and then later in the US, but really this is the third generation of a backup capable battery or grid agnostic system. Uh, now, can you speak on the new battery? Absolutely, right? I think uh, to, your, to your question, this transition that Enphase is going through, we always saw this when we started the company, Martin and I started the company back in 2006, and we always saw this as an energy problem, not just as a solar problem. That's the reason why we named the company Enphase Energy. We were never Enphase Solar. And so in line with that thinking was this notion that we, are, we started with building this microinverter, and it's one of the most sophisticated power electronics devices in the world. And it was not just about building the microinverter, we actually built a microinverter system which includes microinverter, the communications platform, the gateway, and a cloud infrastructure. Very soon, we evolved that into a platform. And solar microinverters became the first application on that platform. And since then, now we have added batteries to that platform. Remember, the batteries have microinverters in them. So the microinverter still continues to be kind of the foundational building block of the entire system. Now we are adding EV chargers. EV chargers becoming bidirectional will have IQ8s in them again, IQ8 microinverters in them, which again, you, again leverages IQ8 as the foundational building block. So it is this platform with many different applications running on that platform. And what that does is allows for software to very effectively manage this platform with solar, with batteries, with EV chargers, managing the grid, et cetera, in order to deliver the best customer experience that the homeowner can get. We at Enphase, after doing significant amount of research, have converged on lithium iron phosphate. And we did that, we made that decision back in 2014. The biggest driver for that decision was safety. LFP arguably is safer relative to other lithium chemistries. Um, the second thing is lithium has better performance, performance in terms of temperature, right? For other lithium chemistries require active cooling, whereas lithium iron phosphate based chemistries, if done right, require no active cooling. If you look at our AC battery, if you look at our generation one, two, and now third generation of a battery, the YQ5P, they're all passively cooled. And what that does is increases the reliability because I don't have moving parts, I don't have fans, I don't have pumps, et cetera. So we have really worked hard on making sure that first our choice of the chemistry was right, and then working with our vendors to continue improving the performance of the chemistry itself, of, the L of LFP itself. Bear in mind, the previous generation of LFP was 4,000 cycles. 
Now here we are at 6,000 cycles. Previous generation was had a 10-year warranty. Now here we are sitting at 15-year warranty. So you should see, a, it's a continuum, right? You will see these kind of chemistries just getting better and better over time. Now there is a fair trade-off, right? If you look at the other non-LFP chemistries like nickel cobalt or nickel manganese chemi uh, lithium chemistries, they pack a lot more energy in a small area. They are rightly, they are well suited for transportation car type applications. But for stationary applications, I definitely trade off the size and weight uh, of the, the higher size and weight of the LFP to get better performance and better safety. Well, that says a lot, and I've seen and reviewed a lot of different research in terms of LFP, and I have to agree that it is a superior battery chemistry, especially on a residential home. It's, it, it's just above all. So um, is, there things, is there things you would like to share uh, with our viewers in regards to what Enphase might have in store for the future with this infrastructure, this ecosystem that you are developing. Yeah, I think you're seeing this transformation like we talked about, a full energy system, an energy system that includes your solar, your batteries, EV chargers. I think really what's, ex what's really again exciting is we continue making the microinverter better. So we are working on generation nine of the microinverter, are they what we call IQ9. IQ10 is already in, in, uh, in, in the works. IQ9 is actually working in our labs and, and we'll release that uh, probably next year. Similarly on the battery, you know, we're just launching generation three of the battery. We've got ideas on what to do. We are actually have developed generation four already. It's in the lab working pretty nicely and you'll see some really nice improvements even with generation four of the battery. We are ideating and coming up with uh, concepts for generation five. So. Um, it's a continuum, and for the homeowner, right, now you're going to see, you're seeing uh, uh, very soon, you'll see a connected EV charger, connected and controllable. What that means is that somebody buys an EV, they shouldn't have to charge from fossil fuel, they should want to charge from their own solar system. So any excess electrons that my solar generates should charge the car. It's called green charging. I should be able to track very closely exactly how much of my car is charged from green electrons versus something that I bought off the grid. And obviously my goal would be to maximize my, the charging of my car with, my, with green electrons with my, from, my, from my own solar system. To reduce your right? carbon footprint. To reduce my carbon footprint. Um, you know, heat pumps, integrating heat pumps onto the platform so I can manage these big loads. If I manage these big loads, I deliver better economics to the homeowner. In Europe, there's a fancy term for it. So integration of solar and batteries and EVSEs and heat pumps called sector convergence. We are also doing that here now, and we are doing that very effectively. Wow, there is a lot in store uh, going on, and, and there's a lot available right now from Enphase. So I, I have to ask, it's all, I mean, this is kind of like the gaming industry, you know, you had the Xbox and then the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. I'm sure you're not familiar with consoles, but yeah. you know, in, in regards to that, you know, there was always that pushback that it would be backwards compatible. Is that an important factor? So if, a, if someone goes solar now with an Enphase platform, are they you know, going to have issues in the future on the expansion of the system um, with, with the new yeah. technology? So um, absolutely, backward compatibility is very important. And for that, again, there was a very strategic decision taken early on that we were going to be we were going to be an AC coupled system. What that means is that all of these devices that we talk about, solar, batteries, EV chargers, heat pumps, the grid, of course, it's all integrated, in the interconnects on the AC bus itself, the AC that runs the 120, 240 volts that runs around in the house, right? We were deliberate about ensuring that you don't that's not a DC system because the DC doesn't have a standard. It can be anything that you, you make up, whereas AC is a universal standard. So for us, extensibility, backward compatibility, et cetera, was so important that we made the decision that all interconnections were gonna be done on the AC side. So to answer your question, it's correct by construction. We are architected in a manner that we will be backward compatible. Um, so any product that we release, we really do think about backward compatibility. In some cases, it takes us a little while to get to be fully backward compatible because we want to get the new product out into the marketplace. 
but um, in the long run because all interconnections are happening on the ac domain uh, we are correct by construction we are we 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 are um, it's easy for us to be backward compatible and that's what we strive to be always so going solar now under this new um, solar building program nem3 with n phase isn't you're, you're not just locked into what you get now you're you're going to get the best equipment that you can source you're going to have a robust software solution that's constantly being expanded upon and we're really excited to be part of your team so that way we can continue to offer your solution to our customers is there anything you'd like to add in closing with our viewers um, thanks Dale and thank you for being a great partner of ours um, you know I think like I said it's a continuum right we're not done uh, there's a platform we started with solar, we have added batteries, now EV charger, EV is just is a load right now, we just charge the EV, but very soon EV EVs are gonna become fully bi-directional, which means now that's another big resource that's contributing to, to, to the ecosystem of the home itself. Uh, people are moving towards heat pumps, right? Again, managing, uh, you know, how, when to run the heat pump is an, as an example, right? All of those things mean that the sophistication of the system keeps going up, which means that I can deliver better economics, better performance, um, well, pretty much better everything for that homeowner, yeah. right? And, uh, and, and really, at the end of the day, this is a problem of abundance. This is not a problem of scarcity. The beauty of being in California, the beauty of the sun, is that there is plenty of, of energy that gets delivered to the home. Um, uh, via solar, and so we can do a lot with it. And this is, this is like I said, is only gets better for the homeowner. It's not, um, it's not a problem of scarcity. This is a problem of abundance. Yeah, agreed. Well, that's all for this week's video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you are interested in going solar, specifically with Enphase Energy, please use the link down in the description below. We'd be happy to have you as a customer and offer you this phenomenal product that Ragu has helped develop. Awesome. Thank you, Dale. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.